Hi, this is Bonnie. Do you believe in luck? Oh, yeah. They're always after me, lucky charms. Do you get the feeling that luck is not on your side? You will find charms for various purposes. Charms for love. Charms for money. Good luck. Killed a rabbit to, to give me this, this foot, this furry colored foot. I mean, rabbits aren't even blue. And I was just like so upset about it. And um, she was like... Hello and welcome to Face the Truth, a program brought to you by The Church of Christ. I am Brother Barry Thompson. Luck. Everyone wants things to tip in their favor. Now some wear a lucky sweater to every sporting event, or an article of jewelry that seems to be on them whenever good things happen. Now others buy good luck charms or hold on to an amulet, which they believe will keep them safe. Now, some avoid stepping on cracks, breaking mirrors, and all other kinds of superstitions to avoid catching a trail of bad luck. Now, however trivial or serious these things are, is this what people should put their trust in? Protecting Batch over me as a shepherd watches over his flock. You are here. You are here. You are here. You are now, amulets, as described by Dictionary.com, is defined as small objects that have mystical powers worn to ward off evil, harm, or illness, or to bring good fortune. And archaeological discoveries have demonstrated that the use of amulets and magic charms was common among ancient pagan cultures. Now today, the use of such objects as a form of jewelry worn as pendants on a necklace or a bracelet are becoming more and more popular. But the question is, does God approve of the use of such objects? We'll find out when we return on Face the Truth. A talisman is ideally charmed by a witch to provide power, energy and specific benefits to its owner. I had remembered I mentioned a rabbit's, the rabbit's foot that I that my mother had given to me when I was younger and how that was supposedly a, like a lucky charm. How is a like you someone killed a rabbit to to give me this this foot this furry colored foot? I mean rabbits aren't even blue. And um, she was like, Taryn, it, it was it was it was it wasn't it was dead when um. You know when they when they took its foot and decided to go and sell it, and I was like, oh okay, well I guess I'll put it on my keychain and and um, so yeah, I, I did that and I actually it did bring some good luck. The main lucky charm that I have I don't have too many, but uh, it's a four leaf clover key ring that my wife and father in law gave to me at the Athens Olympics. Pink, neon pink to add to it, uh, laces for breast cancer awareness. Then one day I was just like, you know what, let me just take a part of this. I mean, I haven't lost since. I do have a lucky charm. This is a, uh, a tungsten band that my husband gave me to race in. Before I hop in the gate, I just give it a little kiss. I was in the seventh grade. My mom gave me this bullet necklace that she told me I was faster than a speeding bullet. I remember the one time I didn't race with it. I finished third at the NCAA finals and I figured I'd never run without it again. Welcome back to Face the Truth. Today we're talking about amulets, lucky charms, and other objects people hold on to because they believe it'll bring them positive results. But does God approve of the use of these kinds of objects? 
Let us read what is written in the book of Ezekiel. The chapter is 13 and the verse is 18. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? Amulets and magic charms are associated with idolatry and sorcery, which are clearly an abomination to God. Now, jewelry by themselves are not against the will of God, but if it is associated with known pagan practices and if it involves divination, spells, sorcery, witchcraft, and others, which is what amulets are, then such piece of jewelry becomes detestable before God, and God's people must not have anything to do with it. Now what did God instruct His people as they entered the land God was giving them? Here in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, and the verses are 9 through 13, this is what we can read. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Now notice that God gave the strict instruction to His people not to imitate the detestable ways of pagan nations. Now what are some of these detestable practices in the eyes of God? Just like what we've read, divination, sorcery, witchcraft, spells, these things clearly should not be done by God's people. And God's people should not wear amulets of such kind. They do not bring peace and protection, but rather the anger of God. However, is there something that God does instruct us to wear for peace and prosperity? Well, let's read now what's written in the book of Proverbs. The chapter is 3 and the verses are 1 through 4. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And so notice that God instructs us to bind around our neck His teachings and commands. How? By not forgetting and keeping His commandments. And if we do this, we will have a long, prosperous life. And we will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. But instead of turning to God and His words, where do many people look to for blessings? Let's take a look at this. I have a lucky pair of socks I wear because I usually double up on socks I wear on my uh, throwing shoes. My uh, lucky pair of socks packed and I make sure that I wear them before every race, make sure they're on nice and snug. One thing I always do is I always put my um, stuff on my left foot uh, first. Like I put my left cleat on before my right cleat and my left shin guard on before my right shin guard. You know, if you believe something's lucky and, you know, I mean, anything that you truly believe can, can be, like, magical. I mean, it, can, it works if you really believe it. Now, do you believe in luck? There are people who have lucky pennies, a rabbit's foot, a lucky sweater, and others. Now, it may sound innocent enough, but is luck consistent with the Word of God? Well, find out when we return on Face the Truth.
considered unlucky because in North America and Europe, a significant proportion of the population behaves very strangely on Friday the 13th. Some people won't fly in airplanes, host parties, apply for jobs, get married, or even start new projects. In fact, in the United States, roughly 8% of the population is afraid of Friday the 13th. We all have superstitions, or some of us at least have superstitions. Uh, they come into play in the world of NBA basketball as well. Good dust. Here. Yeah, if he gives good dust here today. Yeah. Watch, watch the routine. He'll wipe his face three times on the right side. Number one, John Terry. He is the most superstitious sportsman on the planet. The Chelsea defender has made a habit of always going to the same urinal when playing at home. Before each game, he listens to Usher. He always keeps the same place in the team bus. And he puts his shin guard on the same way every time. Johnny the Superstitious. Welcome back to Face the Truth. Today we're talking about amulets and lucky charms. Now, it's not surprising that people desire luck, especially during these dangerous times filled with violence, calamities, and not to mention the struggling economy. People want luck nowadays. Well, what is luck? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines luck as a force that brings good fortune or adversity. Well, is this true? What does the Bible teach? From whom does good fortune come from? Let's read what's written in the book of James. The chapter is 1. The verses are 16 and 17. Do not be deceived, my dear friends. Every good gift and every perfect present comes from heaven. It comes down from God, the creator of the heavenly lights, who does not change or cause darkness by turning. And so the Bible mentions and teaches that every perfect present and every good gift comes from God. And so God and not luck is therefore the one who can bring us good fortune. Now, have you ever stepped on a crack or walked under a ladder, broken a mirror or failed to send out a chain letter? Many believe these things can affect your life in a negative way. They call it bad luck. But should we be worried about superstitions like these and others? Find out on our next episode of Face the Truth. And so the truth may be painful at first, but whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, the truth is something we all must face. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care and God bless.